you take your Bibles, I'll be reading from Exodus chapter 2, the first 10 verses. It's a story that we're all familiar with. About this time, a man and woman from the tribe of Levi got married. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that he was a special baby and kept him hidden for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus reeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile River. The baby's sister then stood at a distance watching to see what would happen to him. Soon Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river and her attendants walked along the river bank. When the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it for her. When the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying and she felt sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then the baby's sister approached the princess. Should I go and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you, she asked. Yes, do, the princess replied. So the girl went and called the baby's mother. Take this baby and nurse him for me, the princess told the baby's mother. I will pay you for your help. So the woman took her baby home and nursed him. Later, when the boy was older, his mother brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her own son. The princess named him Moses, for she explained, I lifted him out of the water. Good morning. Good morning. So you never know what kids are going to do. And in our house, when the kids were, were young, it was pretty loud. You know, two boys and a, and a girl, and they were you're playing. And when it got quiet is when you wanted to worry. You know, as long as you could hear what was going on, it's probably okay. Unless somebody's screaming at the top of their lungs in pain, that's, that's not good. So one afternoon, things got quiet, and we thought, okay what's going on so the kids were playing in the backyard we walked outside and the boys were on top of Kathy's car sliding down the windshield and put a crack in it that long that long it is no wonder it is a wonder that the thing didn't break it's only by the grace of God that it didn't break on them in but you never know what's going to happen there was one, uh, one evening when we were, had just finished up supper and the kitchen was clean and we were all sitting down and we, uh, we started missing Ryan. So we looked at Reggie and, and we said, well, where's Ryan? And he said, he, he's in the kitchen crying. And I'm like, you didn't want to tell us this? So we walk in the kitchen. He had climbed up on top of the cabinets and was looking for the Oreos. And he didn't find them, but he did make it back to the floor in quite a dramatic, fast, quick way and caught his leg on the door handle on the way down. So we were in the emergency room that evening. And you just never know. You just never know what it's gonna be with kids. But I'll tell you what, for all of those crazy things that happen, there's nothing Nothing more rewarding in life than being a mom or a dad. It's just the funnest, most rewarding, most beautiful thing that you can do. And we need to celebrate our moms today because of, because of all that they give for us, all they have to put up with, and all of, the th all of those kind of things. But we need to celebrate ourselves for being moms, those of you who are, because it's just the most rewarding thing in life, I think. Now... This mother that we just read about here, that Sandra just read about for us, this is Moses' mother. Her name's not mentioned here in the text, but her name was Jochebed. Uh, it's spelled out Jochebed in English, but there's no J in Hebrew, so it was probably pronounced Jochebed is how it was pronounced. She did something incredible here. She did something incredible. She took her life in her own hands because she saw something special in her son. 
God's people were slaves in Egypt at this time. They had been in Egypt for, for several hundred years, and they had been enslaved by the pharaohs. They were building the pyramids, and they were building all kinds of things. And they became numerous. They just kept growing. Their population did. And the pharaohs saw this, and they were worried, and they thought, these people are going to outnumber us, so they're going to be so many of them that they're going to rise up against us and overthrow us. So they made a rule, they made a law that all of the Hebrew babies that were born were, were supposed to be executed. Now, that's horrible. It's a terrible, terrible thing, but it's, you know, it's not unusual throughout history for something like this to happen. We look at it with our eyes today and we think, nobody could do that. Nobody could, could possibly do something like that. But look at what happened just in the 20th century. How many children were killed in Nazi Germany? How many children were killed in the, uh, the killing fields in Cambodia after the war in Vietnam? And that's just been 50 years ago. How many people were killed in the gulags of the Soviet Union? How many millions of children died there? Look, this isn't something that's really all that unusual throughout the history of humankind. Life is cheap. Life is cheap to some people, especially those who are living under a dictatorship. It just doesn't mean very much to those who are at the top of the pyramid. So it's not really all that unusual. We really shouldn't be too surprised that Pharaoh made this law here. And that's what happened to these little babies. That's what happened to these little babies. Moses' mother, she didn't want this to happen. So she took some dramatic action that put both Moses and herself in severe danger. She knew that she would not be able to do the things that God had called him to do unless she protected him. So she, she took care of him. She had a strength about her that I think is inspirational to us. And it's just a typical example of the kind of impact that a mother can have. The kind of impact that a mother can have. We're going to see a couple of things here on Mother's Day. We're going to see that Moses was no ordinary child. We're going to see that, that mothers can have great, great influence, far beyond what they would ever imagine or think. And then we're going to see if we're honoring our mothers by the way we live. First of all, this is no, no ordinary child. Now, it says in the text here that when Moses' mother looked at him, she knew there was something special about him. She knew that there was something unusual about him. Now, we don't know how she knew. Most mothers think that uh, their children are pretty special. Most mothers do. Jack's mother didn't. But <laughs> most mothers do. She spanked him twice when he came out. No, I don't know. Maybe it was. Maybe he was particularly handsome. Moses, not Jack. Moses, when he came out, maybe God had given her some special revelation from the Spirit. Maybe she'd have some kind of a dream. Maybe God showed her what Moses was going to be. You know, you never know. But she knew that there was something special about him, and that he was going to do something great. So she hid him for three months. Three months, she hid him. Now this was a dangerous thing to do. It's a dangerous thing to do. She was defying the edict of Pharaoh himself, and that's punishable by death. I mean, he's already shown here that he's willing to execute these, in, these little babies here. He's, he's not going to show any mercy to a mother who defies him. This is dangerous. This is dangerous. And I bet this happened a fair amount. I bet these, fair, these Hebrew mothers tried their very best to hide their children. I, I just... I just bet that she wasn't the only one that hid her baby. But she did. She did. And when he got to be three months, three months old, she knew something had to be done. So she makes this basket. She makes a basket out of papyrus and pitch. Now papyrus, you've heard of papyrus before. It's the weed that grows there in, uh, in Egypt. And you harvest it, you dry it out. You make paper out of it, you dry it out. You, fall, you, you know what papyrus is. So she bends this and puts pitch in it and makes a basket out of it. And this, this is kind of a side note. The word that's used here for basket is a really unusual word. Only twice in the entire Bible is this word used. It's used here for the basket that Moses was put in, and it was also used for the boat that Noah built. So just kind of interesting side note, the only two places in the Bible where this particular word is used. So she makes this for him. She makes him a little ark and she sets it in the river. This was a dangerous thing to do too. Defying Pharaoh was dangerous, but this was dangerous, especially for the baby. It was in the Nile River. You know what lives in the Nile River? Crocodiles. Oh, 
like big ones, big ones, snakes, all kinds of things live in the Nile River. Hippopotamuses, big, they're, they're as dangerous as anything else in the Nile River. Hippos are. But she puts him in there because she has faith. She trusts that God is going to watch over this baby. She knows that God has something for this baby to do, and she trusts. She trusts. It's a testament to her faith. She believed that God was going to take care of her son because he knew that he was destined for something great. So she put him in this position, knowing the danger, but knowing that God is going to care for him. And what happens? Pharaoh's daughter, of all people, finds him. Pharaoh's daughter finds him. Not, not another Hebrew woman, not another Egyptian. Another Egyptian woman probably would have just upset the basket and, and been done with it. Pharaoh's daughter finds it. She knows she can get away with this because she's got her daddy wrapped around his little finger, probably. So she takes this baby. And wonder of wonders, Moses' bigger sister, Miriam, is there. And she approaches Pharaoh's daughter. Now this took courage. Going up to Pharaoh's daughter and saying, I, I can find somebody who can nurse this baby for you. So Pharaoh's daughter says, okay, you do that. So Moses goes back to his mother. And there's nothing to be afraid of because he's protected now. Amen. He's protected now. It's amazing how God works this out. Moses' mother showed an incredible amount of faithfulness. And she was rewarded for it because of this, ordin this was no ordinary child. She influenced him tremendously. She influenced him. She was placed, Moses was placed in a unique position here in a very unusual position, because first of all, he was given back to his mother so she could wean him, okay? So weaning took a lot longer back then than it does today. We, we breastfeed our kids for you know, a year or so, maybe a little longer, and then we're weaning them. We're weaning them. Well, not back then. It, they, it last, they, they went on to solid food, but you know, they, they were nursed for a little while longer, long enough that... Moses' mother had influence over him. She was able to teach him the ways of her people. She was able to teach him the ways of God. So he learned this. He understood this. He knew where he came from. He had exposure to the one true God as opposed to the pantheon of gods that the Egyptians worshipped. So she had this chance here to teach him and to love him and to show him the truth. And she took it. But he was educated in a different way, too, because after his mother had finished, she sent him back to Pharaoh's daughter, which she was supposed to do. And then he was educated in the ways of Egypt. He was educated just as a son of Egypt would be. Because he was in Pharaoh's household, he would have learned all about politics and organization and administration and government and warfare which prepared him for what God had to get the mission that God had for him later on. Amen. He was perfectly prepared for this because he had in his formative years, he had that education in faith. And then as he was growing a little bit older, he had that, that governmental education that he needed to be able to be a leader, to be a leader of God's people. And it's amazing how God works this out. It's incredible. Amen. And it was because of the faithfulness of his mother. Yes, Jesus. The hero of this story early on here is Jochebed mm -hmm. because she was willing mm -hmm. to take her life in her own hands. Mm -hmm. She was willing to say, I'm, I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to trust that God is going to look out for me. I'm going to trust that God is going to watch my baby as it's here in this little basket, I'm going to trust and I'm going to believe. Amen. So she influenced him because she was courageous. She was courageous. Moses' sister Miriam was the next star approaching Pharaoh's daughter, going up to her without fear and giving her mother a chance to wean him. And, and even Pharaoh's daughter is one of the heroes of this story because she took a risk. She took a risk bringing a Hebrew into the palace and raising this Hebrew as her son. That was a risk for her. 
Mothers have a tremendous impact. Jochebed, because of her faith, because of this faith that she had, raised one of the most influential characters in the Bible, not just the Old Testament, but in the Bible. A godly mother can have an influence far beyond what she would ever, ever imagine. Amen. Moses became one of the, the superheroes, if you will, of the faith in the Old Testament. He actually wrote the first five books of the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And if you put, if you compare the amount that Moses wrote, he actually wrote more of our Bible than any other single writer did, Old or New Testament, with those five books, because there's a lot in them. They're long. He influences us, even today, tremendously. He influenced us by leading God's people out of slavery. He approached Pharaoh and he said, God says, let my people go. Amen. He led them out of slavery through the power of God, led them through the wilderness, brought them to the promised land. Then when they refused to go in, led them through 40 years worth of wandering in the wilderness successfully. Yes, he was an incredible leader. He was an incredible man of faith. But he wouldn't have been without his mother's influence. He wouldn't have been. Moms change lives and in the process change the world. There's nothing more important than a mother who raises godly children. Nothing more important. Jesus. Our kids don't always turn out the way we would hope. That's just a fact of life. Our kids don't always, you know, if they just let us make their decisions for them, life would be so much easier. But they don't. They don't. And sometimes we, we watch them make mistakes and we watch them do things that we wish they wouldn't and they take paths that, that we know are going to break their hearts or are going to break our heart. And it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. But we need to have faith. We need to have faith that when we instill our faith into those kids, that God is going to reward that. And that God is ultimately going to be at work in their lives. Even if they don't take the path we would choose, God is going to be at work in their lives. Moses honored his mother by honoring the way he was raised. He rejected the easy life of Egypt to lead his people and to keep them true to God. Hebrews 11, in fact, tells us that Moses, uh, it says that he accepted a life of faith rather than enjoying the pleasures of sin for a season. Love the way that's written. He honored his mother by honoring God as he was taught to do. How do we honor our mothers today? We live by what she taught us. How do we honor our mother? The best way we can honor our moms today is by living by what she taught us to do. Moses led people out of uh, slavery and into the wilderness where there was constant danger. It was a struggle to find water. It was a struggle to find food. There was danger from within. There was danger from the, the nations that surrounded them. But the results were great because Moses led God's people to freedom and gave them a chance to be God's nation and ultimately to, to bring Jesus into the world. Staying in Egypt would have been much easier for him. He wouldn't have had to go through all of that. Staying in Egypt would have meant a life in the palace. Staying in Egypt would have meant the best of food every single day. Staying in Egypt would have meant safety. Staying in Egypt would have meant a life of relative ease and riches and power and authority but he chose to give that up he chose to give that up because he wanted to follow the way that God had shown him and he wanted to follow or he wanted to honor what his mother had taught him the best way for us to honor a godly mother on Mother's Day is to do the same thing a godly mother, more than anything else, wants her children to grow up to have faith. i got to tell this. When we were in Vanceburg, Kentucky, it, we were, it was my first full-time senior ministry. I'd been an associate for about four years before that. This was a church that was 100 years old, the building was, over 100 years old. And it was built amphitheater-type style with the, with the seats like this, and then you had a stage down here. So Reggie and Ryan were 
three, four, five years old. And their favorite thing to do, they decided one Sunday, was to roll under the pews, down the end, during communion. So I'm sitting on stage and I look up and all of a sudden I see Kathy with that look on her face. And she's, get up here, get up here, come here. She finally, they kind of finally come back to her and she has one in each arm like this and she is resolutely walking out of the sanctuary to the bathroom. There was wailing and gnashing of teeth. It was so funny. But they learned you don't do that during church. They never did it again. Oh my goodness. It was, it was something else. But she taught them. She taught them. And they honored, they honored her. They honored her after that. A godly mother deserves honor. The best way to do that is to follow her example. They understand what's really important in life. They do. And we should honor them by recognizing their wisdom and by embracing their faith. Everybody knows Moses' name. Everybody knows Moses' name. Even people who don't normally go to church, most of them know, who, know his name. They've at least heard it before. They've heard it before. They may not know all the details, but they've heard it. I wish everybody knew Jochebed's name. Because she was a testament to the faith of a godly mother. Without her, there would be no Moses. There would be no Ten Commandments. There would be no freedom for God's people. There'd be no... Pentateuch, first five books of the Bible. There'd be no example of how God works through faith. I'm sure God would have done all those things, but she did it through, he did it through her son because she was faithful and she was willing. Amen. She deserves to be honored for that. Amen. And so do all godly mothers. So we're going to do that this morning. We've got something that we want to give to, uh, to each of our mothers. I was going to have Deanna and Drayvon come forward since they're the, uh, the older kids that are there. Come on up. Come on. It's okay. So take one of these. Moms, if you, are, if you are a mother or if you are a woman, stand up. Even if you're not a mom, just stand up. Okay? So we're going to pass these out to you. Now, for the, those of you who are guys who are sitting there, you have to get up too. Because every one of these ladies who is standing here deserves a hug. So I want you guys to get up and make your rounds around the room and give all the mothers, all the ladies, a good hug and wish them a happy Mother's Day. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. I know, I know, you got to get up. you got to hug somebody. You'll live. Give them a good hug. Even Jack can do that. Give them a hug. Tell them Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> All right. Everybody get a hug. All right, now if Shirley and our worship team would come on forward, we're going to have them uh, lead us in our closing. I hope that you'll take the chance to honor your mother. I hope that you'll take the chance to thank God for your mother if she was a godly mother and to recognize just what she added to your life. I had a godly mother. I miss her every day, and I thank God that, uh, that I had mom who would uh, make sure that I was in church every time the doors were open. So uh, let, let's honor them by living the way they taught us to live. Let's be standing and let's, uh, let's go through our invitation hymn this morning.